People power growth, but recruiting and onboarding are expensive, exhausting, and absolutely overwhelming. I've been there and it doesn't have to be this way. Welcome to Hire and Empower. I'm your host, Molly McGrath. Join me as we interview leaders who care about their teams and distill powerful lessons from them. This show is sponsored by H&E, helping organizations to find their best hire and empower them for success. Learn more at hiringandempowering.com. All right, people, we're talking about my favorite, favorite subject, marketing, and we ain't messing around. No bull marketing today, right, Ronnie? Yes, sir. (laughs) <laughs> Sorry, yes, ma'am. <laughs> I'm just so used to that Texas saying that I just went straight to it. <laughs> I, I always say that too. No, sir. And people are like, I'm not a dude. <laughs> I love that saying though. Um, okay, so here we go. We are talking about how 70% of law firm leads come from Google My Business. Yep. And 70%. So Ronnie. Yep. Dive in. Tell us who you are and why you're so passionate about this. This stat, like this, you're you're unapologetic about it, and I love it. When we first met, oh my goodness. Yeah, that stat blew my mind because the actual number is like seventy three percent. It can range as high as eighty percent, but seventy three percent is kind of the average that I've found. But um, so, anyways, yeah. So I actually started my firm because after working on about two hundred plus campaigns, all lawyer campaigns at another agency. Uh, We were tracking every call, every form fill, every live chat. I mean, every lead, if it came in, I knew where it came from, right? And I discovered within those last, you know, those two years that literally 60 to 80% of all of their calls and their new clients, the new client calls, especially the non-referral ones, all of them, 60 to 80% of them could be sourced directly to Google. Now, most of that being Google My Business, another like 10% of it being Google Ads, right? So you got to do both. And they have a synergetic effect between them. But regardless, the point was, I was like, why are we wasting time on Facebook ads? Why am I on TikTok? Why am I on Instagram? Why am I doing all this other work when I'm like literally 60 to 80% of the call volume comes from Google? And I could talk a little bit later about like why that is and why that actually makes a lot of logical sense. But either way, the point was I found that number and I was like, I'm done wasting my time. Why would I put my time anywhere else? And so I built an entire agency, Noble Marketing, around, hey, I'm only going to focus on the the smallest amount of levers possible that have the biggest amount of impact. So I'm never going to do Facebook ads. I'm never going to do LinkedIn ads. I'm not going to go market, talk about billboards. I'm like, no, no, no. This is the biggest lever. And maybe one day I'll find another level ju- lever just as strong. But right now, this is my lever, and I'm going to pull it as hard as I can. Right, 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 right. So talk to us about, because there, I mean, it's confusing and I'm sure you hear, especially in the legal space, they, the legal space by and large is in behind the times when it comes to paid marketing, Um, especially small firm, mid-sized firm, definitely prior to the pandemic, um, many in personal services were, were trained to they, and many people have built beautiful, very, very successful businesses on old school wholesale marketing relationships, what have you. Yeah. So can you just educate us without going too deep in the weeds where our eyes glaze over in regards to just w- talk to me about Google My Business versus Google Ads? Yeah. So Google as a concept can be simply divided into three buckets. All right. And I divide these buckets based on if you were to do a Google search, and if you're listening to this, I advise you do a Google search, say divorce lawyer, insert any city, right? Any type of law, it doesn't matter, but divorce is just an easy one. So divorce lawyer, say New York City, right? Just type that in and immediately you're going to see a grouping of three sections, all right? And this is this encompasses effectively for our purposes, all of Google. Technically, there's some more, but the, for our purposes, this is what matters. Got it. When, when you do that search, the first bucket you're going to see is all Google ads. All right. And you might see some Google ads that have images of attorneys. Those technically have a name. They're called local service ads. For our purposes, again, it's just another format of Google ads. So Google ads, right. And then you'll see text ads and you're oft, often going to see like an ad on the map as well. All right. So the first like 40 to 50% of the screen is almost always ads, just strictly ads. All right. And that's Google ads and that's pay to play. You pay to show up, you get clicks, those clicks turn into phone calls, and you're basically doing a math game of, hey, how much do I have to pay to get a new client, 
right? And on average, we somewhere which see somewhere between two hundred and fifty and five hundred dollars, right? If you if you're good at it, right? You can do way worse than that, but on average, around there. And then considering a case value is usually three four thousand dollars, that's a very profitable campaign. That's not yes. a problem at all. <laughs> Wait, yeah. say that again. Three. So three. somewhere between two hundred and fifty and five hundred dollars per case from Google Ads. It's wow. usually it's about what we're gunning for. Now right. in pers- in personal injury, that might be higher. Yes, because yes, yes. you're gunning yeah. for much bigger cases. Yes. But for things like family law or things like criminal or things like immigration estate or state planning. planning. Yeah, yep. estate planning. Yep. Um, yep. All the transactional stuff. Uh, yeah, that's going to usually be 250 to 500, which again, profitability wise kind of depends on what you're targeting. So it can be a little risky if you're just doing trust and wills, right? Because that may only be a 500 to a thousand dollar transaction. No, 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 not our clients. That's good. All right. Not your clients. I have to advise. I meet a lot of state planners who like, they're like bottom dollar. And I'm like, man, I know. you got to raise this, but good. Yeah. So then our average $3,000 you're great. You're doing awesome. Like you're more than profitable in that campaign. So anyways, that's Google ads. That's your first bucket. It's like 50% of the screen takes up a lot of space. Yep. Beneath that is Google, my business. All right. And that's the map pack. There's lots of different names for it. It's also called Google business profile. Now they technically rebranded it. Um, but it's the thing that has reviews on it. Stars. It has the map physically, right? There's like three yep. people that rank on it. Plus an ad on it, right? That's Google, my business. That's the bulk and that's, and that's on the right hand side of the page, right? Not when you do the search. Not when you do oh. a search. When you do, if you do a search for an individual lawyer, you see yes. it on the right hand. If okay. you if you do a search for something like divorce lawyer near me, you see a grouping of three different lawyers. Okay. okay. And what you want is whoever shows up number one there gets sixty percent of the calls from that page from that search. Sixty percent of the calls on that search, divorce lawyer near me in that market. It's always geo based, like physically where you're located. Yeah, 60% of those calls are going to go to whoever shows up right there on the first slot of Google My Business. Okay. And so Google My Business there, that's huge volume. All right. Showing up on there, that's reviews. That's the map pack. There's a bunch of grunt work that goes into that that we can talk about. But so you got Google ads. First thing you see, pay to play. Google My Business. The next thing you see, the higher volume, right? Further down, but the highest volume of actual calls. Okay. And then below that, you have what people understand now as traditional SEO, or if people were to talk about SEO at all, usually what they mean is rank your website highly, get website traffic. (laughs) And I say that in a dumb voice because there's a big change that's changed over the last year. There's a big thing that's happened, a big shift, I should say, which is used to be organic results showed up, or I should say SEO results showed up above Google My Business, but now they're below Google My Business, which means you have to scroll really far, which most people don't do, really far before you show up there. And on top of that, it's your aggregators, your big guys like Avo, Justia, Fine Law, Super Lawyers, all these guys spending millions of dollars a year. They're the only ones that show up on those results. Okay. So when you talk about traditional SEO, you're talking about website traffic, as far as I'm concerned, that's dead. It doesn't generate viable money. Maybe it exists if you're a big enough firm and you can spend $20,000 a month and you can wait two to three years to see an ROI. If you're in that bucket, anybody listening, SEO can work for you. Absolutely. If you're if you're not in a bucket that you can't spend twenty thousand dollars a month and not see an ROI for two to three years, I would give up on SEO entirely, and I would focus completely on Google My Business and Google Ads, and those are your kind of three major buckets. So, how do you focus on Google My Business? Yeah, Google My Business is two effective. Um, <laughs> I don't want to say buckets again, but there's there's two. <laughs> core pieces. There we go. Pieces, two core pieces to Google my business. All right. And it comes down to 65% of it is grunt work. All right. Yep. And so on, on that profile, and I always ask people this, it's a really obvious question. What do you think Google likes? Google likes Google. That's it. Google likes <laughs> Google. That's all they like. That's all they know. They only care about themselves. All right. So what do you got to do to prove to Google that you deserve to rank highly? Do literally everything you can on their platform to prove to them that you love them as much yep. as they love themselves. Okay. Oh, which means love that. Which means on that profile, I'm doing everything I can. I'm posting photos. I'm uploading posts. I'm posting my own questions. I'm answering my own questions. I'm uploading additional products and services. I'll upload up sometimes up to a hundred services. Right. So here's an example like 
I know you do mostly you're working a lot with estate planners, but it's an easy thing that comes to mind is a criminal lawyer. A criminal lawyer is not just a criminal lawyer. He's also a drug crime lawyer, but he's not just a drug crime lawyer. He's also a marijuana crime lawyer, Xanax yep. crime lawyer, prescription fraud, estate planning is not just a state. It's probate, it's trust, it's wills, it's power of attorney, right? It's health directives. Like there's endless you know, divisions and you can literally go tell Google every single independent service that you offer with descriptions and just put the grunt work in and show Google exactly who you are and what you do, which makes it way easier for it to rank you, right? And way more likely because they're saying, hey, this guy's an expert. They do all these things in this space. And they're like, ah, this guy deserves to rank highly. So 65% of Google My Business wow. and sh showing up on there is just grunt work, all right? Just putting in the work that nobody else in your market is willing to do. And that's a lot of what people hire me for because I'm just willing yep. to do the grunt work because at the end of the day, this is 10 hours a month of effort, like you, at minimum, right, often more. You don't have that time as a lawyer, and nor should you. You pay yourself at four hundred dollars an hour, right? Like, pay somebody if not else. More, yeah, if not more, right? Like, yes, to, to pay somebody else. But the grunt work has to be done, all right? So, like, it, it's sixty-five percent of it. If you don't do the grunt work, you're not going to do very well. All right. Second to that, and I would say you know, it's percentage-wise, it's about thirty-five percent. But do they really need to be done in tandem? Is getting reviews, all right? I cannot understate the importance of review generation. Review generation is a huge lever on its own, and it comes from two parts. It's called review count and review velocity. Review count is obvious. It's just literally how many reviews you have. If somebody in your market has 800 reviews and you only have 30 reviews, you're going to compete less good or less well than they do, <laughs> right? Yes. Um, also is review velocity, though, and this is where a lot of the hope comes for some of you people who have like some super competitors around you is that it's not just review count, it's review velocity. And what that means is review velocity is how frequently do you get a new review? And, and so for example, Google would rather see you get 10 reviews over 10 weeks than it would rather you get 10 reviews in one day and then nothing again for 10 weeks. And the reason for that, if you think about why, is Google wants to see consistency. They want yes. to see that people consistently like you, that they, co they come back to you, they think well of you, and that you build your business as a viable, steady business over time. They don't just want the guy that comes in and says, I'm awesome with 300 reviews, Yeah. but, but no one ever talks about them again. That looks shady, yeah. right? That always looks shady. You want that consistency, right? So if you're in a market where you got somebody with 300 reviews and you only have 30, well, the way you compete is to be better at getting them faster and more consistently. So get a review every week or a review every couple of days. Okay. So review generation is like 35% of it. All right. And we can talk a little bit later if you want about how do you generate those reviews. A lot of lawyers have some um, untrue thoughts about what limits them. Can, the yeah. Let's go there. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So the biggest thing I get from lawyers is they're like, I, but I, I can never get these reviews. People don't want to, or I don't want to ask, or it's uncomfortable. The bar is going to slap me for you oh, know, everyone's worried about for the bar. referrals. Yeah. I've heard There's, it off. It's endless things, but Here's the thing about reviews that a lot of people don't realize is where they get stuck up on is they often, the biggest one they get stuck up on is they think they can only get reviews from a recently closed client who yep. paid and they finished the case, right? Yep. And that is simply not true. If that was your only option, you would be screwed, right? Yes. Because how many people do you talk to versus how many cases you take on, right? Maybe 60 cases, maybe a hundred cases a year. Like you're not, your, your pool is very small, much less how many do you close in that time period, okay? Fortunately for you, the rule is not that. The rule is that you have to have provided some form of legal value, okay? Mm. That's it, legal value. So especially in estate planning, that includes seminars. I have estate, yes. plan I have estate planners right now that go to a nursing home in front of 60 people, right? They get, you know, they do a two-hour seminar. They get maybe four, five, six, seven clients out of it, right? Great, they made their money. But then I add on that and say, hey, at the end of that, that, that meeting, at the moment you finish, ask all 60 attendees to leave your review on Google and you'll get 20 reviews right there. Just boom, done. Which is hilarious because they're like, this is the next objection. Singers don't know. Bullshit. That's a, my grandma's an Instagram queen, man. Totally. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Especially since the pandemic, they love the smartphone. It's so funny from my, you know, my aunts and my elderly people. I'm like, oh my God, stop blowing up my phone. Do I have a job? Like, you know, if somebody put on, I have to say this, somebody put a, like a, um, I did a Facebook post last night and I didn't realize that you were going to go there, but it's so funny. They said something, Hey, if you need more likes and you need more engagement on your um, Facebook plate, here's my mom's number. 
<laughs> they're like she is like constantly blowing up my tiktok my instagram i don't even know how to get in tiktok that's amazing yes so the the elderly are absolutely tech sufficient enough to leave your review i mean i have yes. a lot of estate planners who get 20 plus reviews there every time uh, yes. they do a seminar yep, okay absolutely but here's another one the consultations you do especially if you do free consultations but even if you do paid ones yep. i have people right now that every time they do a consultation we have an automation set up that five minutes after the consultation is done, we ask them to leave a review. And we'll get three, five, sometimes 10 reviews a month on autopilot from consultations we already did yep. and we're going to do regardless. And 80% of those didn't even turn into clients. They're just consultations with people who value talking to a lawyer. That's it. So How we're was gonna... your experience? Did you feel acknowledged? Did you have fun? Did you learn a lot? Did you... People love to leave their opinion. Oh, yeah. And as long as you did legit job and you try to be helpful and you were kind and like most lawyers are, a lot of lawyers are really trying to be kind and helpful and not and not rude and, and, and trying to be cognizant of people's difficulties. Like if you did all that, you just did your normal thing. Most people are like, yeah, he was helpful or she was helpful and they got me what I needed and put me in the right direction. And you can get reviews from these consultations you're already doing anyways. And especially if you're doing free consultations, it's like getting paid to do them. Not actually, yes. and don't say that to the bar because that'll freak them out. Because um, they'll be like, you're paying for reviews in that sense. Or you're getting paid in reviews. Yeah. No. <laughs> don't let yeah. them say that. I uh, take all yes. that back. If anybody at the bar is listening, that's a, I didn't say that. <laughs> but anyways, no, no, no. The, the point is you can get reviews from a lot of unique places, okay? And you can get them from anywhere that you provided some form of legal value. Anybody you gave free advice to, family and friends, anybody you've trained. If you did CLEs where you trained other lawyers and they found your training helpful, that's valid. Referral uh, sources that referral you referral sources, yeah. Anybody you provided legit value to. Actually, a lot of people, I have a lot of attorneys right now who they take that consultation and they're not going to serve the client, but they refer them to another attorney and they get a review because the person's like, Man, the person was so helpful and they referred me to another attorney. It was great. Yes. Yeah. They get reviews from that. And they, even yes. though the, even though they don't sign them as a client. So the point is getting reviews is not hard. Um, but what it does mostly take is being willing to ask as many times as possible in any opportunity you can that's good, right? So big one is right after a consultation and obviously right after a case has actually closed, all right? And then what we do with our clients to make it easy is we automate that, right? And we yes. especially automate follow-up. Nobody, nobody, very few people, I should say, respond the first time you ask them for a review. Most right. people, they're going to respond the third, fourth, fifth, or sixth time that you ask them to leave a review, all right? So follow-up is key there. But regardless, back to our original point, which, hey, how do you do well in Google My Business? 65% grunt work, 35% reviews, get over yourself. We might be talking 100 phone calls a month or more, okay? I took somebody one time, she was about to go into bankruptcy, was on loans from literally like three consultations a month. In a year now, she's getting 35 consultations a month and has now mm -hmm. hired multiple staff members, okay, in that time period. And most of that is from Google My Business because she got reviews, we did the grunt work, and it paid off, all right? So do the work, get those reviews, ask people, be willing to, trust me, it's worth the investment. It's worth the time. You'll get paid back in spades. So for our attorneys listening that maybe are not accustomed to spending money on digital and um, social marketing, and what I'm taking away from you, Ronnie, start with Google My Business. Start with Google. I love that. Who does Google like? Google. Google. And I will say that, and this is why we talk about Google ads. A lot of people, they want to start with Google My Business only because it feels organic and it feels cheaper, which has some truth to it. But here's the thing that uh, you can say, but you can never verify. But for some reason, anytime you spend money on Google ads, <laughs> Google My Business just happens to do better. I wonder why. I, don't, I, I got no idea why that correlation would happen. I don't know. Can't prove it. But yeah, so the point is, uh, you know, I absolutely Google my business, but I also highly, highly recommend Google ads. If you don't mind it, I'd love to talk a little bit about Google ads. Yeah, quick. Go yeah, for I'll, it. I'll go as quickly as I can. So the thing about Google ads, Google my business is great because it raises all tides. You can get that hundred phone calls a month. You can get that bulk. Downside of Google my business is you can't control it very well. All right. So if you say you're an estate planner, yeah, but you decide you don't want to do say, not that you ever would, but say you don't want to do probates, right? Yes. Google has, is going to get you leads for probate, regardless of whether or not you want leads for probate. All right. There's no yep. controlling Google My Business. All right. It's right. going to rank for anything with state planning related. Okay. So it's a raise all tides platform. So that can be great because you can refer those leads out, you know, but you still have to field those leads. Okay. 
So raise all tides, get your volume. You're going to get your volume. That's where a lot of your profit's going to come from. However, you can't be targeted and, and intelligent in what you target. Google ads on the flip end, you can get really targeted at what you're willing to pay for. But here's my caveat. Never do it on your own. Always pay somebody who is a professional. Of course, I'm biased, but here's why. Google ads is designed to spend your money, not make you money. Repeat mm. that. Google ads is designed to spend your money, not make you money. And the only way you can make it make you money is if somebody is literally going to war with the platform. All right. And that's my job. I go to war. All right. I so this. I go in there and I go to Google ads and I give them literally 3000 keywords of what not to spend money on. I never want to spend money on a click. This is cheap or pro bono or free or low cost or quick or two day turnaround or whatever. Like there's a, there's literally 3000 of these keywords. I never want to spend money on that click. But if you did it yourself, Google ads would be like, oh, yeah, yeah. You want estate planning? Sure. This person who typed in cheap estate planning, I'll pay for that click. Or this person that says how to file your own estate planning. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll pay for that click. Oh, yeah, it, it'll just pay for everything. It, it, it don't care. If you no, say estate don't. planning, it'll just say everything with estate planning. I got you, fam. Like whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> but they'll spend it and you won't get any calls out of it. Or you get really low quality calls and calls you don't want. So you got to be willing to go war with it. All right. And then the second thing that a guy like me, and I'll drop it here. A second thing a guy like me can do it with it is that we can apply contextual intelligence. And what I mean by that is I know what makes you money in your business. Google doesn't, right? So I can choose to, for example, like I know a probate case is worth 10 to $20,000, if not more, especially a nice one. And I know which zip codes are most likely to do that. I know a wealthy zip code is way more likely to have somebody who needs a probate case that's worth 10 to $20,000. Right. So I can go in there and I can apply that a con contextual intelligence and I can target these specific wealthier area codes, wealthier cities, wealthier zip codes. And then I can say, yo, Google, let's not do the trust and wills right now. Let me say just the ones typing in probate or estate administration or um, asset division or these various terms that are likely to be somebody who's going to be that higher dollar case. Right now, that's not the only one you might do. You might still want to go after wills of sure. trust. I'm not, I'm not saying you never go after those. I'm just saying I can imply intelligence to where I think it's most likely that we're going to spend money to make money. Okay. So one, mm. I go to war with the platform to prevent it from spending money on really bad clicks. And two, I apply intelligence so that we're spending money on the clicks most likely to turn into money. And that's how you can make Google ads a hyper profitable platform for yourself. Oh my goodness. Ronnie, tell us how our listeners, how they could get a hold of you. Every one of our listeners better be <laughs> reaching out to you. Absolutely. Well, I love chatting with people. Uh, the best way to get in contact with me is at HTTPS, noblemarketing.co. That is .co, not .com. I will buy that. Uh, it's a very <laughs> expensive domain, though, so I'm <laughs> waiting on that. But .co. And the one thing I want to share with everybody is uh, we do offer the industry's only three-month profit guarantee. And what that means is I guarantee your campaign will be profitable in three months or less, or it's free. If for whatever reason I fail after the first three months, I will work for free for up to three additional months. And if I fail for whatever reason after six total months, I will actually refund not only all of your management fees that you spent on me, but also all of your ad spend that you oh. spent on Google. I will refund literally everything if I fail. How's that for a risk reversal guarantee? Holy hell. I've never failed, so... <laughs> I, well, clearly, <laughs> clearly, because guess I, what? I got what you I do, recorded man. saying that. Oh, yeah. It's on the website. I don't hide it. It's, it's, it's in my contracts. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, my goodness. All right. So can they put in noblemarketing.co and get to you, right? That's it. Noble Marketing. That's in as in Nancy, O as in Opal, B as in boy, U, L as in log, L as in log, marketing, <laughs> dot C as in cat, O as in Opal, noblemarketing.co. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like me trying to call an 800 number <laughs> in the <laughs> <Yeah>. Philippines. <laughs> That's exactly. I got really good at it. <laughs> yeah, clearly. Uh, so many support all right, calls. Ronnie, thank you so much. Listen, who wants to increase your leads? Who wants qualified leads? Ronnie's laid it out there for you. I know I have clients that have been using Ronnie. This is why Ronnie's here. And I can tell you that like F, Facebook, like, oh my goodness, I am on this. Now, some people are you 
using Facebook as well. So I'm not, I'm kind of teasing about that. But if you are spending no money on marketing, this is where you need to start. If you are spending money on marketing, you need to make sure that you have a very, very strategic approach. So I'm going to put Ronnie's contact in the show notes here. And Ronnie, thank you for being our guest today. I'm pumped. Oh my goodness. I'm bringing you back. Absolutely. And just a little caveat for everybody. If you mention Molly's name, I'll waive your setup fee and save you $2,500. Just give me Molly's name and I'll save you $2,500 instantly. Oh my goodness. All right. All right. Come on. I wasn't going to do it, but I got excited. So, okay. Uh, thank you, Ronnie, for creating really, truly. I've had many people on here talking about Google AdWords, talking about SEO, what have you. And you have completely made it very, very simple. And thank you for not going into the techie weeds. I tried so hard. Thank you. Yes, you did a great job. <laughs> All right. Until next time, continue being leaders, leading leaders. We've reached the end of another impactful conversation on the Hire and Empower podcast. Whether this was your first episode or you're a longtime listener, I know you can tell I have passion for people. Whether you're a business owner, employee, executive, or hiring manager, I understand the situation you're in. Hiring, onboarding, and leadership is expensive, exhausting, overwhelming, and if that's not enough, it's also time-consuming. My friends, it doesn't have to be this way. There is a team at H&E that has your back. For over 25 years, they've transformed over 4,000 law firms into efficient, effective, profitable assets for their business and made it fun to come to work again. Check out our Smart Hire Solution, our Employee Leadership Program, and the 66-day law firm turnaround at HiringAndEmpowering.com.